In networks where connectivity is paramount, BGP associated with BFD has proven to be a strong ally. And we are now proud to offer this solution in NetShield. Hi, today I'm interviewing Matthias Fredriksson, who is our product owner for NetShield. And he's going to tell us a bit about BGP and BFD in NetShield today. So Matthias, uh, what is BGP? Yeah, so BGP is a dynamic routing protocol and it stands for Border Gateway Protocol. So you can use that in NetShield to exchange routing information with other BGP neighbors. How do you do that in NetShield then? Yeah, so then you use something that's called Route Export Rules. And uh, by, by using them, you can basically you can import routes from, from BGP neighbors into the, the local routing tables in NetShield. And you can, the same way you can export uh, static routes from NetShield and, and uh, communicate them to other routers in the network. If you're communicating with the BGP router, then, then you need to talk, be able to talk BGP. But if you also have OSPF routers in, in your network, NetShield can, can uh, use OSPF as well. So then uh, you can set it up to basically take information from the OSPF routers and send it from NetShield to the BGP routers. And Matthias, I often see BGP and something called BFD uh, go hand in hand. Yeah, B BFD is bidirectional forwarding detection. And it's, it's a rather simple protocol that's used to detect failures in, in path forwarding. So what that means is that um, you can use that to notice if another BGP router in your network goes down. And, and if you have a redundancy, you can fall over to uh, the other router rather quickly. Now with me is Daniele Bottini, who is our professional services engineer and who is going to give us a bit of a more customer-oriented perspective. So, uh, Daniele, uh, do we have any customers using BGP? And uh, if so, how do they use it? What's their application? We have a lot of customers using BGP and uh, the typical application is uh, uh, for, for BGP on our firewalls is uh, inside um, a net network infrastructure to, to manage uh, high availability. BGP is by definition a, a slow protocol, but we have uh, some, some features which, which are really good to, uh, to be used to, to make uh, um, the protocol more suitable for, for data center utilization. And one of them is for sure the BFD which make, make possible to detect uh, network outage in a really quick, uh, quick way in a split second and uh, uh, make the firewall to react and to take the necessary action to reroute the traffic um, on, on different paths for telecom operators uh, who, uh, who, who need basically to manage a lot of uh, prefixes. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's not... Uh, uh, doable with uh, static routing, so BGP is really, really useful. Do you have any any anecdotes uh, regarding this kind of big configuration? Yeah, yeah, I can mention the biggest uh, BGP configuration that we did for for a telecom operator. Uh, it was uh, one hundred and twenty BGP neighbors with uh, more than forty routing tables. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit of work. Yeah. But in the end, all good. Yeah. Customers got it to work. Yeah, yeah, that's what matters. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Without configuring 120 BGP neighbors, let's check out what it looks like in NetShield. Here, we can see the Clevis and NetShield firewall connected to two different BGP neighbors. Both routers are exporting the same prefixes for the networks reachable in infrastructure A. As the prefixes are redundant, the NetShield BDP engine will select one of them as primary path. This is where all traffic will be routed, as long as the path is operational. To handle a scenario like this, NetShield needs to be set up with a few BDP configuration objects. First of all, a BDP process. This should be configured with a suitable AS number and a router ID set to a local IP address. Desired BGP neighbors are then added as child objects to the BGP process. 
we need to specify the IP address where it's reachable as well as its AS number. To achieve fast path failure detection, BFD is enabled. The BFD transmit and receive interval can be tweaked together with a multiplier to achieve the desired time for failure detection. So the prefixes learned by the BGP process, an export rule is added with a filter matching the networks of interest. In this case, we choose to export the match prefixes as routes to the main routing table. Now, let's see how it looks like when everything is established. To confirm connectivity with the BDP neighbors, we can look at the BFD status. It shows that both neighbors are up and reachable, meaning that both primary and backup path are working OK. When looking at BDP prefixes, we see that all three prefixes have been learned from both neighbors. As the metric is lower for the prefixes pointing over the primary path, those are the preferred prefixes. This is also evident when looking at the actual routes exported to the main routing table. Only the routes over the primary interface with BDP router 1 as gateway are installed there. We have now blocked all network traffic over the primary path to simulate an outage. With current BFD settings, the NetShield BDP engine should notice this within half a second and reroute traffic over the backup path instead. When looking at BFD status again, it now shows that the system has detected the failure and declared the session towards router 1 over primary path to be down. As a result, all BDP prefixes that were pointing over the primary path have now disappeared. The same change has also been reflected in the routing table. The previous dynamic routes have now been removed and replaced by corresponding routes over the backup interface with BDP router 2 as gateway. This rapid update of the dynamic routing will allow traffic forwarding to start working again after a short disruption caused by the network failure. Any existing traffic flows will likely continue to work without any need to be re-established. And this is but one of the many scenarios that NetShield supports. If you want to start using this feature, contact us now. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching and stay safe.